Yeah, how? How, <laughs> how does anyone write a biography? It's, uh, it's a good question because, I mean, it is a strange thing, isn't it? Why spend you know, years of your own life writing about somebody else's life? I mean, first of all, you've got to have a sense of a, a life that's remarkable and worth examining. You know, the Socratic thing is, you know, the unexamined life isn't worth living. I remember Alfonso Lingus stood that on its head and said, um, yeah, but the, the, the unlived life isn't worth examining. And Robert Lenkowitz's life was like, it was like ten lives and several centuries all sort of packed into one. Unbelievably rich, busy, creative life. So, yeah, you have to, you have, to have a, a vital relation to the, the, the subject matter and... Um, I mean, that, that relates to the writing itself, to the process of writing. You've got to make sure it is a biography, not just a, a long obituary. Um, yeah, they were born, they did this, they said that, they died. So what? So what? That's just dead information. No matter how many facts you heap up, it's not a biography. Um, biography, bios, life. You know, it's the bow from which arrows are fired. If you just present facts and you're not communicating the, the energy, it's an obituary. It's got to be vital. It's got to be vital in terms of, in terms of practical advice. I, I'd say start with an organisation. You know, establish a timeline. Write out a timeline as soon as possible. Try to grasp the big picture, the big composition. See where the main events are. You know, in that sense, it's a bit like music. You should establish a beat and a tempo as soon as possible. Get a sense of where it gets more intense, where it lulls, where the tension builds and so on. Try and grasp the overall dynamics first, and then you can you know, maybe spend a year or two looking for the nuances. An overall theme. Um, <laughs> well, it's, it's very easy with Robert Lenkiewicz to say oh, it was all about sex and death, but, but that's wrong. I mean, similar criticisms were, well, they're not even criticisms, similar points were, were, were used to try and dismiss Sigmund Freud. Uh, if you make generalizations like that, it's bound to be a cartoon at best. I mean, I, I, as I see it, Robert Lankovic's life and work was about making connections and, and not closing questions down with easy generalisations like that. He's painting fishermen in the morning. At noon, he's hanging out with alco hooligans outside his studio. By sundown, he's engaged with some intellectual giant like Dora Russell. And perhaps the main theme, if there is one, is... is is his role as a connector, you know, an educator and a thinker acting out his thoughts. I mean, his life was his argument. That's the bedrock. He was an educator and his life was his argument. For those who loved him and for those who couldn't stand him, that's the main denominator, the main argument. He proved that you could live in such a way that knowledge and creativity can be an adventure every day, every year. And you, know, you look at where his argument leads, through the people, look, I mean, look at it through the people he taught. His son Wolf and Louise Courtenel, Jan Travail, um, top level image makers like you know, Nahem Shoah, very significant artists. And he wasn't only teaching them painting technique, he was teaching, a, like, he was teaching an attitude to inquiry. Now, you see it in people like Nick Fox and Paul Grolsch and Megan Clay and other historians and philosophers who. A huge number of people who went through that studio became doctors and professors, and I'm not saying Robert was the only cause of that, but he helped it and he encouraged it immensely, immensely. He directly provoked me into my first PhD, and there's a whole generation of people who were turbocharged by him. He was thinking about aesthetics and mysticism and fascism, and then there's his role as a social documenter. He did that all his life. A lot does get lost in the sensationalism that he courted. You know, rising from the dead and keeping his friends' corpses and so on. But at the core of his life, there was this thirst for knowledge, a joy, a real passion for learning. And he communicated that energy better than anyone I know. A lot of that comes through in the paintings, which is what he's mainly remembered for, quite rightly. But I think a different kind of energy comes through in the biography. And that's, the, yeah, it's his baraka, his momentum, his life energy. And as it comes back to the previous question, how do you... How do you write a biography? You've got to get a sense of movement, and you've got to dance with the energies that's already there and take it forwards. Time for one more question before uh, we start sacrificing lunch. <laughs>